Hey guys, I'm here with PhysioU, Dr. Marshall Lemoyne, and today for the teaching table, we're gonna talk about evidence-based practice. Um, I'm here with two third-year students, two DPT students, um, Cameron and Chris. Thanks guys for joining. Um, and they're gonna kinda ask some questions and we're gonna learn about evidence. All right, what do you guys got? So I was just wondering, a lot of people look up to you and just how you research articles um, in general, and I'm wondering how you do it with speed and so you're not spending all day and all night looking up articles. Um, I, that second part's probably not true. <laughs> I just stay up late looking at articles. Um, but I would say there, there's a little bit of method to it that I've over doing it now for 10, 11 years that I've definitely learned to become faster out of necessity almost, right? Um, part of it is, uh, I feel blessed that part of my job is I get to teach at CSM, uh, teach in a university, teach in residence and fellowships, where I kind of, part of my job is to look these up and stay on top of it. Um, so not just for my clinical practice. So that in itself is there is like a financial sometimes uh, opportunity that I get paid to be on top of it. Uh, but I'd say it starts with abstracts. So when I'm reading abstracts, if, uh, if it's something that off the bat, not anything that's kind of answering the question I have, that's all I'm reading. So I'm just perusing abstracts. Um, and then if there's ones that I like, I don't stop and read that whole article. I just try to get the full context, put it in a folder, put it in a folder. So one day maybe purely, I'm just looking for articles um, purely based on the abstract. So I may read through a hundred abstracts, um, but at the end of it, I have 14 articles maybe that like, hey, you know what, this fits. So that would be like the first aspect to just narrow down. Um, and then I'd say, based on those abstracts, right, I'm looking for, when I look for articles, I'm looking for things that I have questions about already. So let's say we're talking about uh, FAI, right, femoral tabular impingement. I'm not just gonna type in FAI and get this long list. It's gonna be our FAI diagnostic criteria. So something very specific and it'll pop up 100 articles on I'll read some of those abstracts. And then next search may be FAI and conservative rehab, conservative pair. And again, it'll give me a list. And then it may be um, rehab after surgery or maybe outcomes years later or something. So I kind of have I maybe I have one diagnosis, FAI, but I have like seven questions I'm trying to answer. So instead of having a big long list of articles, it's only showing me lists in there. Um, so, so that would be kind of like my day one is just searching. And so maybe I do spend a couple of hours going through that. Now the idea is I have these 14 articles, let's say. Again, I'm not reading all 14 of those articles, right? That takes a long time. But what I am gonna do is go to their methods. I'm gonna read their methods and be like, oh, are these good methods, right? And the results. All right, what happened? So before I read the intro, the discussion, which is kind of the stuff, uh, that's kind of like the bread, the bread on the top and bottom of the sandwich, right? The peanut butter and jelly on the inside is the methods and results. What did they do and what happened, right? Versus the nice fluff that makes it um, uh, help us understand it more. So based on those two, if it's say, you know what, this is good, they had good methods, I can use that, I can replicate it, um, I can teach on it, great. That one goes in a separate folder, the other one, if it doesn't, it goes out. So it's kind of like a tiered system to have that stuff. So um, yeah, so that's kind of how I keep up to date with it, I would say. And my question would be kind of what's your best sellers list? Like what, like since we're, you know, almost graduating, you want to keep up with the research, what journals would you recommend us kind of looking at starting out? Yeah. Uh, I would say early on, right before I was spent tons of time on PubMed and stuff like that. and. Uh, where I work, I have access to almost any journal. I, early on, it was JOSPT, right? From when I was a first year student, even now, I still get the hard copy, the paper copy, sorry, environment, um, because I can just keep it at the house. It normally sits uh, in my bathroom, and so if, if I just can read an article here and there, peruse through it, it's something that if it's on the side of the couch, I'm just sitting down. So I'm always kind of looking through that one, um, and there's, there's always good stuff in there, right? And the nice thing now is they tend to make the, that journal that month like all kind of related. So if it is like an FAI, there'll be like four or five articles all on FAI. So I kind of look for ones that I really, is, on, is maybe I'm interested in. Um, and it's like, oh, they've already done the research for me. They've already pulled together three or four on it. Um, so I say the other one is the International Journal of Sports, just because that's again what I'm, I'm interested in. Kind of, I treat a lot of ACL patients and I have some sports patients. So I kind of like those maybe more for personal. Um, but as far as journals now, I don't really have a favorite journal because everything is so accessible online, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to limit myself to missing out on maybe stuff from um, 
phys med journals or from orthopedic journals and so but the nice thing is it's so easy now to search through PubMed and Pedro and Google Scholar even where you get so many free texts and if you're a part of a university or your work you have access to all these um, yeah so I think that's uh yeah I think that's how I'd answer that one <laughs> um, some other things would be is how about when we look at research and we and we read it and we're like oh that's great man oh my goodness and then four days later we're in the clinic we're probably not thinking about that journal at all <laughs> right so it kind of goes in one ear out the out the other ear a lot of times so how do we a implement the research or be at least remember it long enough to have a chance to implement it with the patient and i'd say that's more of probably the issue that we want to stress because now people put a lot of stuff on social media where it's just a quick article the content they find so you're you're getting a quick one minute breakdown of this research article which is fantastic maybe it'll make you go read the whole article and that will help make it stick right the more time you spend on it the more likely it's going to stick but then what happens is you slide to the next page and then all of a sudden you never forget you forget about it so i'd say the important part is doing something with it right so so for me if i am going to look up an article i never look up just one I always look for a cluster, right? I surround myself with other people that kind of look at stuff. And so um, being with some of the residents, we have a journal club every other week and it's like, hey, we're gonna do one topic and all five or six of us are gonna find a different article on the same topic. So you're actually gonna get this nice base of, hey, there's six articles all on this topic that have, all of them have a little different thing to offer, but then you're really gonna get a good in-depth. It's like going to a Con Ed class for that. So that's kind of where I feel like that helps me implement it a lot easier. Um, another thing is, if you don't have that, it's doing something with the information, like creating a PowerPoint or putting in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Doc, something that's easy to access, where when you do have that patient, right, that doesn't, that, uh, doesn't necessarily make sense or that you have a question about, you can pull up that tab on your Google, fo on your Google slide folder that says rotator cuff, and it's that article that has some of the key points, right? So just like when you're in PT school, if you take notes, you're more likely to get something out of it. So I would say... If you really want to become in depth in the research, you can't just read it. You have to do something with it, um, which takes time and energy and effort. Um, the uh, patient specifics make it helpful. So instead of us looking for research and then trying to find the patient to, to implement it on, if you have a patient, then go look up evidence on that because you're probably more likely to use it because that patient's going to come back in a couple days, hopefully. So I'd say that's another way to help implement it. And then lastly, build it into a schedule routine, like set time, set time aside that says, you know, every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. or something that's in your calendar, right? Um, this is your job, your career. Find time just like you do to, to exercise or you do to um, eat meals or something. Right? Have some time in your week. Not a lot because you want to be able to stick to it. So don't go gung-ho and say 10 hours a week of research. I'm right? okay, one hour a week, I'm going to find an article or three abstracts or something. And just hey, you know what? I'm gonna put that in, and then make it make it part of your practice. I know some clinics nowadays have like educational time, like physicians, kind of time built into their day where they just get to look up evidence. Like two hours every Monday morning, our phys med docs um, get to get time to just do evidence based learning. Right? They look stuff up, so it's kind of they get paid for it. It's expected. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Any kind of other questions on evidence based? Nice. Okay. Well. Thanks for joining in, guys, to our teaching table. Follow us on our social media. Give us a, a like and uh, let us know what you think. Also, you can go to physiou.com to our Knowledge Central page where we have tons of videos of Mentoring Minute and a bunch of these teaching tables that are free. All right, take care, guys.